Hello everybody, welcome back to the shop. Uh, we've got a few minutes today, so I finished up our copper tank uh, wooden buck that we're going to use to make that. And you can see we've just cut out the shapes last time and uh, got them sanded. And then I notched in some some braces here and just screwed them in. Put some holes in there so we could see what's going on on the inside. And sometimes it's helpful in this area where it gets real tight around here. You can put a clamp on the outside one. And the only thing left to do on that, I've got to notch this area out here. That's where our seam is going. And I want to have some room for that. So uh, the buck is just about finished. And we're making some progress on the tank. And I'll show you uh, the seam that we're going to use and show you how we make that next and there's the old tank remember and uh, I've got the grooving machine out here this is just a hand operated pexto machine there's the handle and this basically has one job and that's to finish off the seam uh, this bottom part here is solid uh, tube uh, this um, well solid bar actually uh, <clears throat> that side has a groove in it as you can see I'll try and get you in there that side got a little groove in it and that's so we could set the seam to the inside of the tank and that rotates there's a flat side there if you just want to smash it down there's another smaller groove on the other side and there's an even smaller one on the bottom so I'll show you how we make that top seam I'll meet the camera set up and I'll show you how that works okay we've got our groover set up and I made a sample here and that's what the top of the tank looks like that's how they made the the joint there and it's just bent over and crimped down I don't know if you can see that it's kinda of hard with the glare but um, that fits together perfectly and then that'll get that'll get soldered up and be a nice fuel tight seam and the way that starts I think you'll be able to see this one I just put that in the brake and I bent over a quarter inch um, as far as it would go in the brake, a little past 90. And then I just kind of flattened it out a little bit. I hope you can see that. The glare is kind of terrible in here today. And then those two are just going to, they're just going to hook together like that. And we've got a couple stops here. Uh, you don't have to use the stops, but I got them set up now because I'm trying to work the camera and do everything at once. So that will just get set in there. Oh, hang in there. Let me loosen this guy a little bit and move it out. Okay, then we're going to run our wheel over it here. We've got that centered in the groove there. And we're just going to run that by. And then we'll run it back. And that's what makes your lock joint there. I think you can see it. it. This would be the top of the tank and it would set it down. And then when you fill that with solder, it'd be nice and flush. But that's the that's the machine we're gonna use to do that joint right there. I think you can see it. 
Uh, the tank's a little bit bigger, so we'll move our stops around and <clears throat> and do some stuff. But um, that's the machine that was used to make joints like that, and that's everything from a a small cup to a pail to a bucket. You know, anything they were making out of sheet metal or uh, copper, um, tin, whatever. This is the type of machine they would use to make the joints. Okay, I think I got you a little better shot of that seam. Again, this is this is the top of the tank. So what that groove does in the in the machine there is it pushes everything down inside the tank and makes a nice surface here when that's soldered. It'll be real nice. I think you can see the offset in there. So that's a real tight joint. And before we make it, you know, that won't come apart even right now with nothing in it. But uh, before we make that joint, uh, before we close it, we'll put some flux in there. And then we'll close the joint. And later on when we go to solder it, uh, it'll be pre-fluxed and ready to go for us. And it'll flow right in there and fill up. It'll go right around all these, all these joints here. And uh, fill that up real nice and be a perfectly strong joint. That's how fuel tanks are done. Um, the top seam is usually done like that. So, um, just showing you what we're what we're up to, and we want to get this in the right place because the sending unit gets kind of close to it. If we don't want to have that in the wrong place on the tank, so I'll show you what uh, what that looks like next. Okay, what we're looking at is a top joint on the tank, and you can see the sending unit. It's fairly close to that. So we don't just want to put that anywhere, we want to put that right back in the same spot. And I think you can see where we notched out and where the seam is. We're going to get that in the same exact spot. So I've been uh, fiddling around with a little bit of the copper, uh, getting a basic shape. And um, I'll put that on a bench next and show you what that looks like, show you where I'm at right now. Okay, there's a basic shape of it right now. Got that glare again. That copper is real shiny. But you can see we've got a lip bent on that and on that. Those are going to go together. And that's going to make our seam on the top. That copper is really throwing a glare. I hope you can see that okay. And that's the basic shape. Um, this is half hard copper, so it's kind of a real bear to, uh, to bend around. I just kind of put the buck on it and, uh, and use a wooden slapper and kind of slap it around into place. Uh, it moves. It, it, it's stiff. Uh, but it does move, and we've got to crispen up some of these bends and stuff. But we'll put the buck back in it and uh, and make some adjustments. And um, that's just a very basic shape right now. And I've got the two the two bends in it, and that'll make our seam. And we'll get working on the center uh, part that goes in there and make some. Um, <clears throat> make some cutaways for the fuel to slide back and forth and then we'll get working on our end panels and uh, we'll put those on the power hammer and raise them up real nice uh, I think you can remember what that looked like we'll get those raised real nice and then we run it around the flanger we'll we'll put this nice detail in there right around here I'll show you how we do that and I've got the cap and the filler neck ready to go so we're making some progress on this. Uh, I'll show you a few more things and, um, and then we'll keep working on it and uh, turn it into a tank. Uh, hang in there, I'll be right back with you. Okay, there's our filler neck. I still got to be cut to size and threaded. That's a piece of brass, a uh, two, uh, two inch pipe diameter. And this is the cap I'm using. This is a vented cap. 
and um, like I told you last time, I'm not a real fan of the uh, reproduction vented caps they're using, they're making now, and and uh, a lot of guys are using and selling them and, and having trouble with them. Uh, I don't care for those, so we're going custom with a uh, brass cap, and like I say, it's vented, so it'll work properly. We've got to cut some threads in this brass, and they're not uh, pipe threads. They're not NPT pipe threads. They're um, uh, straight mechanical. So it'll be NPSM threads, National Pipe Straight Mechanical. And I'll show you how we cut those. Like I say, it's a straight. Uh, this won't fit on a pipe thread. Um, <clears throat> if anybody's trying this out, uh, that will not fit on a tapered pipe thread. You need the straight mechanical thread. So we'll put that in the uh, pipe threader and uh, I'll show you the dies we use to make the uh, the straight threads. And obviously it's got to get cut and and an angle cut on it and um, <clears throat> angled on the tank so it comes through the body in the right way. But uh, we'll work on that. We'll get it threaded first while we got something to hold on to in the threader. And uh, we'll get that cap screwed on. <clears throat> Figure out if we're going to use that chain or not. Uh, I don't know if I'm going to keep the chain in there, but if I do, <clears throat> we'll change it to a, uh, a brass chain and get rid of that, just that steel chain. Uh, we don't want anything in there that's going to react or rust or do anything like that. We're going through trouble making a copper tank, so we never have to worry about it again. And uh, that's where we're at on the cap. I've got a uh, quarter inch plate that'll get soldered on the inside, so the sending unit screws have something to catch into and uh, I'll show you all this as it happens and uh, right now we just keep tinkering away on it and uh, just a short video to show you where I'm at and if you like the video hit the like button uh, subscribe to the channel let me know if there's anything you like to see and uh, as always thanks for watching and I'll catch you on the next video and um, we should have some more done on the copper tank okay thanks again for watching